Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to thank you um, for joining the webinar. This is Heather Creven with WasteCap Nebraska, and we are going to go ahead and get started. This is our ninth installment of the 2015 webinar series, Building Better Communities. For a complete listing of remaining topics, please visit our website, wastecapne.org, and look under the events section on our homepage. Our corporate sponsor for this series is Lindsay Corporation, and it is partially funded by a grant from the Nebraska Department of Environmental Quality and a Partners in Education grant from the Nebraska Academy of Sciences. WasteCap Nebraska is a statewide, member-based nonprofit that works with community and business leaders to build zero waste communities. Our mission is to eliminate waste in Nebraska through innovation, education, and policy change. During today's webinar, you will learn about how 11 BNR grocery stores in Lincoln have successfully started composting their organics with prairie land dairy outside of Thurf, Firth. Soil Dynamics Compost Farm in Gretna is also a resource for food composting, and we will provide you with their contact information at the end of this webinar. Food waste, which makes up a significant portion of our waste stream, is becoming a growing concern of public health and government leaders. In September of this year, the USDA and the EPA jointly announced the United States' first ever national food waste reduction goal, calling for a 50% reduction by the year 2030. Part of this effort will focus on getting edible foods to people who need it, and another part will focus on keeping food waste out of the landfills. According to the EPA, food loss and the waste is the single largest compost of you. United States Municipal Solid Waste going to landfills and accounts for a significant portion of methane emissions, a highly potent greenhouse gas. Diverting food waste from the landfill to a compost operator is not only good for the environment, but it can save you waste hauling costs and provide you with a valued locally produced product to sell in your stores. Our pre presenters today will be Jacob Hickey, the Business Development Director of Prairie Land Dairy, and Patrick Ritter, the store director for Russ's Market. Patrick is the director for Russ's Market at a B&R grocery store in Lincoln. He worked for Russ's Market for eight years and has over 19 years of experience in the grocery industry. His was the first grocery store in the state of Nebraska to attempt this kind of composting program, and he's proud to say that they compost and recycle 65% of the waste produced there. Jacob is part of the fourth generation managing family at Prairie Land Dairy in Firth, Nebraska. His main responsibility is taking care of all the distrib distribution and public relations for Prairie Land Dairy and its two sister companies, Prairie Land Foods and Prairie Land Gold. Jacob also helps his wife Megan, daughter of owners Dan and Brenda Rice, with day-to-day -day operations on the farm. Coming from a large dairy operation in Oklahoma, Jacob has seen and been involved in every aspect of the dairy business and has a passion for making sure that the end consumer gets a safe, nutritious product. During the webinar, please type your questions into the chat box as they come to mind, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. A recording of this presentation will be available afterwards on our website at www.wastecapne.com org in the archives. Now, as I turn the presentation over, there will be a slight delay before Jacob begins. Thank you again for attending. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks, Heather, for the introduction. Like she said, I'm Jacob Hickey. I'm part of the um, fourth generation family here at Prairie Land. Um, and what I'm going to go over today is kind of how we get started with grocery stores and uh, anybody else for that matter that wants to compost and what we do with the compost and how we get started. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. So our goal here at Prairie Land Gold is, uh, is turning waste into gold. We want to take that 80% uh, um, that goes into the landfill that's compostable and turn it into something useful, a useful product. Um, our mission is serving people, cows, and the planet. 
And uh, our goal is kind of to partner with like-minded companies to carry out a sustainable effort in uh, taking care of our planet. And we want to leave this earth cleaner and greener for the future generations, for our next generations coming. And um, in doing that, uh, in, in composting, we can we can fulfill that goal. So together, we can divert about 85 to 90 percent waste. Um, out of the landfill and into our compost operation and then um, you can take another 10% out uh, by recycling. So the first step um, when we go into a grocery store or any other facility to compost is to start with we want to make it as easy as we can um, so and the way to do that is First of all, source customization is what we like to call it. Um, we like to get as many compostables as we can, such as utensils, um, the garbage bags, um, and anything you might use as far as packaging or uh, whatever you can make compostable, we suggest that you do it um, because it makes it a lot easier to separate. And it, if you have a lot less things, that go into the landfill and a lot less things that uh, may be recyclable and most of your stuff goes into compost, it makes it a lot easier um, to make um, containers and customized posters and um, such. So uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, we make sure we get clearly marked recycle containers and uh, we want to make sure that they're kind of general. Uh, to make sure that everybody understands and gets the idea. We don't want to make them too complicated um, because people don't spend the time at the um, at the garbage container looking at what they should throw in there and what they should not. If they don't see it right away, then they're just going to pick one and throw it in. Um, so you really want to, the, the education posters and the stickers on the outside of the containers are extremely important um, in this whole process to make sure that um, people understand where things go when they go to throw it away. Um, so as far as setup, uh, we like to come in and create an intercompany green team and we're finding that a lot of companies already have this done. Um, it's either their um, their supervisors or they actually have a green team um, that's the first step. We like to get a couple people on board that really want to go forth with the project um, and really want to make it work and then we want them to be our leaders. Um, so that's the first step is to create an intercompany green team. And then uh, we want to figure out how we're going to um, haul it. Uh, we want to either talk to your current garbage disposal, garbage hauler or uh, we also run a route in Lincoln, in the Lincoln area, uh, that we pick up compostables. So we go around twice a week currently and pick up uh, compostables with a rear loader compactor truck. Um, we'll come in, uh, Prairie Land will come in and do a, a waste evaluation, or Waste Cap can also do that, a waste audit and see what percentage of your waste is compostable, recyclable, and go into the landfill. Um, that just helps us a little bit on um, how often we're going to pick up and uh, what the volume is going to be coming out the back door. Um, sometimes we will create customized education posters. It kind of depends on the scenario, on what you're throwing in there. Um, and what you're throwing in a landfill and such, uh, we can we have the ability to create the customized posters. Though uh, we found that we have one set of posters that works pretty good for um, most situations, um, but we can customize them a little bit. Um, we will eventually once the green team gets going. It's always good to host them down at the dairy. Um, and the reason we do that is we want to show them where it's going. We're going to show the show them where their waste is going and what it's being turned into, and that always helps um, paint the picture and paint a better picture as to 
what happens to the waste after that and why we're doing this. Um, source separation, and this is kind of um, a big part. Uh, we we like to come in and do a 10-minute training. Uh, we we provide that. Uh, WasteCap can also do that too. Um, but we do a 10-minute training over what goes in the recycle bin, the compost bin, and the landfill bin. Um, and we really like to at least get the intercompany green team um, trained, and if not everybody. Um, I know we we like to catch. Uh, the lunch break, if, it, if I know grocery stores, it's a little bit hard to get everybody at the same time, but uh, we like to get as many people as we can and get uh, get them trained so that everybody's on board and everybody knows what's going on, and then they go out and relay the message to everybody else that it wasn't in there. Um, your people that your janitors or your people that take out the trash are super important um, because. A lot of times your janitors will have the little carts that they roll around that have only one trash bin on them. So if they're not trained, they're going to take all three of your trash bins and they're going to throw it all in one and throw it in the same dumpster anyway. So we really have to focus on making sure that they are trained um, and they know what's going on um, to begin with and, and where that stuff goes. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick at this point. Uh, he's from Russ's Market, and he was our first uh, first customer uh, as far as a grocery store goes, and he's going to tell us a little bit about their site and their site separation. So, Patrick, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, yeah, we had the honor about a year and a half ago, I believe, to start testing this program and work closely with Prairie Land and Jacob down there. So. Uh, like Jacob said, uh, first thing we did here at the store was create an inner store green team uh, that consisted of about five managers in my store. Um, so we got that team together and uh, discussed it with all our, our uh, associates in the store. So uh, after we did that, the first thing we did was buy 55 gallon trash cans for our fresh departments that consists of our deli, produce, meat department, uh, bakery, and floral departments. Um, so we would uh, set those trash cans up in their departments, um, and we use these uh, recycle bags. They're biodegradable bags, which uh, we purchased through Jacob. Um, uh, and we would set that up next to our regular trash cans. So throughout the day in the meat department, when they're cutting meat, um, any of the waste they would have there, the fat or the trimmings, they would throw in the organic recycling bin there in, in Jacob's trash can there. Anything that wasn't biodegradable like uh, you know the foam trays, the plastic, whatnot, would go in the regular trash that would go out to the landfill. So uh, we ran this test for well over a year here, and, and it took a while to get everybody on board. Um, but once we, we got going here, uh, we noticed uh, our waste going out to uh, uh, the landfill was uh, reduced drastically. And really, at this point, we're about uh, probably around 65% of our waste is recycled. Um, that waste would consist of any, uh, uh, you know, trimmings from the meat department, uh, um, out-of-date products or, or stuff that needs pulled, like in the deli case or, or bakery, stuff that's not sellable. A lot of that stuff we try to send to food net first, and, and any of the other stuff we would recycle with Jacob um, and, and send it down his way. If you see on the slide here, you can obviously see an example on the top there. That's my meat department. Uh, the trash can on the left side is the uh, uh, stuff that we sent to Jacob there. And the one on the right is our regular trash bin there. So on the bottom, you can see our floral department, uh, the waste they recycled. Um, pretty neat. We, we would, uh, about once a day, sometimes twice a day, we would uh, open up the back door, um, take these uh, trash containers out and, and dump them. In a, I don't know if you want to go to the next slide, Jacob. Uh, we had a trash can behind our store uh, for the Prairie Land stuff there. Uh, you can see it here. Um, our supervisor would kind of inspect uh, what was going out there, making sure we weren't throwing, you know, plastic or stuff in there that couldn't be recycled. Um, and then Jacob would come out there uh, once a week and pick that up. 
You want to do the next part, Jacob? Yeah, sure. Um, Is there anything like else Patrick said, once once they get it into the dumpster here, then uh, it, it's kind of our part to take over at that point. And um, so what we'll do at this point, we'll inspect what's in the dumpster. Uh, we look at the dumpster every time, make sure there's no plastic, metals, styrofoams, or glass in there before we dump it um, so that we can prevent that from going to our compost operation. Um, and next is um, transportation. Like I said, uh, we pick that dumpster up um, Twice a week, currently, it kind of depends on the on the volume. Some stores we only go to once a week. Some of them we go to twice a week. Um, but it varies uh, depending on volume, and that's kind of a trial and error type deal. We kind of have to go um, try it, and then and then if we need more space, then we have to figure out something different. So, um, but twice a week is working for most grocery stores. It's working very well. So, um, and then once we get it down to our compost operation. Uh, the first thing we do is we weigh that truck and we um, figure out what we're going to put in the uh, compost and we mix it in our receiving pad. Uh, we take our our all of our organic waste and we mix it with our cow manure to start the um, composting process, the decomposition process. Um, that stuff starts breaking down right away. And uh, once we have the right mixture, we'll lay it out in windrows, as you can see in that bottom picture there. Uh, we lay it out in windrows, and uh, we'll monitor the oxygen, moisture, and temperature on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day. Keep the microorganisms alive. Uh, the microorganisms are breaking down the compostables um, into a soil amendment. Um, so the, the way we look at it is the is the cow manure brings the bugs to the the bugs and the heat to the process, and we're feeding those microorganisms with the compostable waste. Um, and we can actually we'll actually get rid of about 60% of that organic waste within the first couple weeks of it being out there. Um, it works pretty quickly. Um, the compost process itself takes about six to eight weeks, and then we take it and we um, We'll cure it for about nine months to a year, and we'll uh, continue to monitor that as we go. Uh, we cure it for about nine months of the year, and then we will take it and uh, we'll sell it to the consumers. Uh, we sell it in bags, and we take our bags back to the B&R grocery stores, um, Super Saver and Russ's. We take them on um, pallets, and oh, I got a picture of the bag there. Um, we take that bag to the uh, to the grocery stores and uh, they sell it from there and that's how we get it back to the end consumer. Um, Patrick, did you have something to say there? Yeah, I uh, want to talk about the finished product there. We, we uh, started getting that in the spring. We put it in our garden centers and sold it out there and we found it, it, it sold very well uh, compared to the uh, miracle Grow. Uh, which is kind of a similar compost. Uh, the, the cost on the prairie land was was cheaper than the Miracle Grow too, and I used it for the first time this year in my garden, and it's an amazing product. Uh, did very well, but uh, our customers love the product. They they know the prairie land name, so it, it's uh, this was our first year doing it, so it's in its infancy stage there. But it's uh, I think we sold about four or five pallets worth there, Jacob. I don't know how many is on a pallet, but it was it did well. Yeah, yeah. So we look at this more as a soil amendment versus a fertilizer, and that's what we really have to um, relay is that it's it, we're building the soil, and we're doing the same thing that we do back at the farm. Um, if we take care of that soil, then the soil will really take care of the plants for us, and that goes for you know crops, that goes for gardens, flowers, and yards for that matter. Uh, we also sell our compost down at our dairy um, store in bulk. Uh, so we have a lot of people that come down in their pickup trucks and we'll dump it in the back of their pickup truck and we also sell to a couple um, nurseries and landscaping centers also in, in bulk. So, um, 
Uh, this is the contact information for the Soil Dynamics there in Omaha. If you're up in Omaha, um, they have composting uh, available. Uh, Heather, you want to? Did you have something to add? I just want to make sure that everyone got the information um, that in the Omaha area, food waste is composting is offered by the Soil Dynamics, Dynamics Compost Farm. And this is their contact information um, if you have any inquiries or if you want to do a consultation on how to get started um, in Omaha, that is how you can do that. Okay. And I think that kind of wraps it up there. I'll um, also show my information uh, if you want to get a hold of me, uh, if you're in the Lincoln area. Um, you can get a hold of me and we can get something set up. Like I said, we come to Lincoln. We have a route in Lincoln, so at this point it's uh, it, it's a little bit easier to set it up in Lincoln than it is the outlying areas because we already have a, a route set up and, and all you need is a dumpster and some training and we can get going. So I think it's time to open it up for questions unless somebody else has something to add. It's Patrick. I got one thing to add. I didn't discuss during my, my portion. There is uh, the the cost that we saved on uh, trash pickup. Uh, we were doing trash pickup twice a week with industrial services. I'm currently down to one pickup a week, and uh, I believe this year I'm going to save close to three thousand dollars in trash pickup fees. I'm hoping going forward that'll even reduce more. My goal is to get trash pickup maybe once every two weeks. Um, so uh, that's that's a goal of mine for 2016. So not only is it a great program and good for uh, the environment, it's also uh, as businesses we we try to save money and cut costs, and and uh, this has helped me in my trash expense there. Awesome, yeah, good point, Patrick. Uh, we try to make our cost cost neutral, and one of the key factors there is redu doing just that is reducing that uh, the uh, what am I trying to say? The landfill cost. Uh, a lot of haulers will just keep picking up two to three times a week unless you get on them and tell them, hey, I don't need this much um, pickup. And that's what you really have to do is try to reduce that landfill cost uh, as you go into this compost program. And that's how we really make it cost neutral. And that's great. I want to thank Jacob and Patrick for all the information that you guys have given us. Um, I do have some questions. Um, my first one is, does Prairie Land wholesale compostable containers slash bags, et cetera, to customers? Uh, yeah. We've kind of steered away from the uh, the containers. It's a lot cheaper if you just go buy your own container. However, we do provide the bags, and we prefer that you buy the bags from us um, because we know that they work. Um, and we've tried a few other bags and they don't really work as well as our compostable bags do. Um, so that's the reason we prefer that you buy the compostable bags from us. Other than that, the compostable wear and the containers that you put them in, um, it's just as easy to buy those yourself and get them from your current supplier. And then my Back next up. question, is, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, Back onto that too. I know I, I said uh, earlier we use 55 gallon trash cans in our departments. Some of the departments you don't need to do that. Your bakery, or we're finding in our bakery, you know, a smaller trash can would suffice, uh, even in our floral departments. Um, I just wanted to, you know, starting out, uh, go big there and, and, and have a, a container that was the right size. But you, you might be able to get by with maybe a, a you know, a 10 or, or 15 gallon size trash can. Yeah, we have we have trash bags for all sizes, so. Um, we carry three main ones. Our main ones are the small office size trash cans, the 13 gallons, and then we also have a medium size, which would be like your kitchen um, trash cans, and then we have the larger 55 gallons. And so, the, my next question, Patrick, will be for you. Um, do you face many issues in the grocery store with the meat being in a container container for three to four days, depending on the volume? such as flies or small um, smell and insects in the summertime, or does frequency vary accordingly? 
our packaged meat that we sell? Um, no, your stuff in your compostable container. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, we have found in the summertime, uh, you know, it, it, when it gets hot out there, 90, 100 degree days, it, it does get a little ripe out there. Uh, we, we do get, get some flies, but Jacob has been coming up twice a week. It, refresh my ma uh, memory, Jacob. It's, uh, it's a Tuesday and Friday. Is that right? Uh, Monday, Monday and Thursday currently, yep. Excuse me, okay, Monday, Thursday, I was close. So uh, th that helps with the frequency there. Obviously right now there's no issues. Uh, you know, we had our first freeze here, so wintertime there's no issues. But, y yeah, uh, uh, there's a couple times we've had to kind of wash them down, um, and I think Jacob's helped with that too, keeping that cleaned up. But, uh, yeah, July was, uh, you know, those peak months, July and August, uh, uh, you, you do get a few flies out there, but it's, it's not that bad. I have my trash compactor. We have an, an, an indoor one where you, you throw it in there and it, it you know smushes it, and you got the compactor that sits outside. I don't have any, you know, I have as many flies on that as I do uh, the Prairie Land one there. So. And then Patrick, yeah, how I'll many? Yeah, oh, Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Jacob. I, I just wanted to add a little bit to that. That's all right. Um, we do try to keep them as clean as we can when we pick up, and we're working on a uh, washing system that we can kind of spray them out. We're going to add some fly spray to that to try to keep the flies away. And, um, you know, it's not too much different than your compactor. When you go yeah. from a compactor to, because you're just taking your trash from one container to the next. So if you don't have it in ours, you're going to have it, you're going to have the smell and stuff in the other compactor too. So. There's not too much difference in in between ours and your and your other one. And I have a, a neighborhood right behind my store. There's probably a house within 50 feet of that trash can. I've never smelled an odor or had any issues or complaints from my uh, neighborhood here. And then Patrick, my next question would be for you again. Um, how many stores contribute to the program now? Or maybe that's one for Jacob as well. I know I can speak for B&R stores. We have 11 stores. In town here, all the Russes, Markets, and Super Savers partake in this and have been doing so this year. So um, obviously some stores have more waste and contribute more, and, and Jacob could probably probably tell you that. But uh, um, it's been a great program so far. I know our customers get excited about it and know that we're recycling and, and, and part of this process. And so, Jacob, did you want to come? contribute on how many stores contribute to the program? Um, yeah, so we have the 11 B&R stores and then we have a couple other stops that are not grocery stores um, on our current route. So we have, uh, I think we have around 23 stops in Lincoln currently that we're picking up at. And we also have other haulers that haul for us on our uh, bigger accounts, our industrial accounts. So we have we have a lot of stops in Lincoln. Um, I can't even tell you a total count, really. And so, Jacob, my next question would be for you as well. Um, what other businesses besides grocery stores are composting or that you're picking up for? Well, we currently have nine public schools that we're working with um, to compost their cafeteria waste. Uh, we have some dog food manufacturers that have their scrap uh, maybe their scrap trimmings or their scrap uh, stuff that falls on the floor that doesn't meet specs, you know, whatever. They have a lot of um, compostable waste that they can take out of that landfill. Um, we have food manufacturing places such as ConAgra here in Lincoln that brings us popcorn three times a week. So we get a little bit of popcorn three times a week. Um, we um, yeah, we bring in a waste, a variety of different waste from all different kinds of things. Oh, and we also bring in yard waste during the summer. We bring in a lot of yard waste from uh, the South Lincoln area, Hickman area. Hmm. And so then, Jacob, my next question is for you as well. Um, do you, does Prairie Land wholesale compostable containers and bags to just customers that are on the route, or do you do it to more than that? Um, we'll do it as long as it's in case quantities. We'll do it to we'll we'll sell them to anybody. This 
time. I'm not seeing any more questions. Let me just double check. Oh, here you go. Um, do you work with any vermicomposters? I work with an African nightcrawlers, red and blue worms. Worm castings bring out the best in composting, I believe. Are you asking me or any? Patrick? <laughs> I'm asking you, Jacob. <laughs> Now, we don't work with any vermicomposters, no. Our, um, we just never really got into that. I have no doubt that it's a good compost, but uh, we can't quite move the volume um, through vermicomposting that we can with um, our current composting methods. And then what are the costs associated with the um, composting, with you coming and picking up? At the grocery store, Jacob. I assume no, that they're less based off of what Patrick said. Yeah, we charge a monthly rate um, for coming to pick up, and it's just a it's just a hauling cost that we charge. It kind of depends on the site too. Um, if we, you know, whether we haul it or somebody else hauls it, uh, what the what the cost will be. For the most part, we just have a, the hauling cost, and then your cost of your um, liners, cost of the bags. And then Patrick, my next question is for you. Um, did Russus Market switch to all compostable containers? And if yes, did that cause a big increase in cost? Uh, no, like I said, in each department we have compostable uh, containers and we also have containers for our uh, our regular waste there. So. Each of the departments have yeah a trash can for each one. There was an initial cost with that. I just uh, I think I went over uh, to the local hardware store here and, and got a 55 gallon trash can. Um, you know I think they were about 30 40 bucks a piece times you know five departments. So a couple hundred dollars startup fee and then obviously the, the trash liners from Jacob. But uh, initial cost startup was not that much. The biggest thing was getting everybody to buy into it, all the department managers to buy into it and and it's just a repetition thing, having them do it over and over and, and, and inspecting, making sure they were following proper protocol. And then that kind of answers the next question, but you might want to expand on it as well. Um, what is the biggest challenge for Russ's market? Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, you get turnover in retail. Sometimes you get a new manager and just getting them to buy into it. It's, it's not that much more work. I know when we first started this program, I volunteered to do it. And, I had some managers just kind of like, oh, come on, Patrick, one more thing we got to do. And and really, when we got to understand the program and what it was about, I mean, this is about our, our future of our planet and, and, you know, setting our kids up here in the future. Um, uh, once they realize that, I mean, it's no more work. Instead of throwing stuff in, in the, the, the regular trash can, you're throwing, you know, your, your, your meat waste in, in the uh, compostable one there. So little to no more work. It was just basically getting everybody trained and, and making sure everybody's on, on the same uh, page there. Um, once in a while you get an associate that, that uh, doesn't like to follow proper protocol, you just have to work with them and train them. So once we got past that hurdle, I mean everybody in my store is, is all for it and uh, it's a great program and I, and I got total buy-in from my associates. And it looks like that's all the questions that we have at this time. Um, I'm not sure if Jacob or Patrick, you want to contribute anything else before we close the webinar. Yeah, I'll just I'm good. I can't reiterate enough how, how great of a program this is. I want to thank Jacob for uh, including us here. It's a it's a great program. Um, you know, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but uh, you see projections for our planet here in the future. I mean, we're going to have you know over you know nine ten billion people here in. in uh, it's very important that we recycle our waste and, and, and find a home for it here. Not only is it good for our planet, but uh, like I said here, it's, it's in the cost too. I'm saving money. Uh, I'm going to save $3,000 this year. So I, I'm hoping that'll grow in the future. So it's a win-win for everybody here. That's all I, guess, I got. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, no, I, I'll just, Adding on to what Patrick said, you know, it's a people often ask me what, you know, what do I get out of it? Um, you get the peace of mind of knowing that you're saving our planet for that next generation. 
um, super important to that we start reducing our our landfills and uh, stop putting that stop stop making a man-made hill and let's make it into something that uh, that's more useful such as compost and, um, and start reusing some of this stuff so that it can get made into a useful product instead of like I said getting made into a uh, landfill that we can never do anything with. And again, I want to thank both Patrick and Jacob for presenting this webinar for us today, and then also all of the attendees who have been watching it. Um, the recording of this presentation, again, will be on our website afterwards, so you can get the contact information then. And then if you have any questions in the meantime, you can always just email WasteCap. Um, again, thank you for everyone's participation and we appreciate you being on the webinar.